Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Soul Patrol Jesus 911, two man car. My name is Jesse Romero, my wife. My name is Anita Romero. Good morning. Retired Los Angeles Deputy Sheriff. Retired. Retired LA County Department of Health Services registered nurse. So both of us, uh, again, per- first responders. Now we're first responding to people's souls. We're, we, we, treat, we treated the body for many years. Now we're treating the soul. We want to start off with the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. And today we want to talk about a thing that's very interesting mystics we're going to define what a mystic is then i'm going to tell you about some emails and phone calls that i've had recently i've had them for years and that's why we're doing this show and then we're going to go into what the church teaches about mystics so let's start off with the saint michael the archangel prayer and we'll do it in the language of holy mother the church in nomine patris et feliz spiritus santi amen Santi Michele Archangeli, defend us in prelio, contra nequitim et insidis, diaboli est o presidium, impera ili deus suplices de precamor tuque, princeps militiae celestis, satanama liosque, spiritus malignus, quia perditionim in amarum perogantur in mundo, divina virtute, in infernum de trude, amen. In nomine patri, et filii, et spiritus santo, amen. Mystics in the Catholic Church. I've had a couple of phone calls. My wife gets these phone calls as well. We have a a two-man apostolate. It's called On Fire Evangelization. We, uh, my wife and myself, when we left the, the county of Los Angeles, uh, when we retired, we started just becoming Catholic missionaries. We just saw such a need in the church to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ authentically from parishes to parishes because we just got tired of the kumbaya, balloons, banners, and butterflies, Catholicism. So we are literally... Two Americans of Mexican descent that have left law enforcement and nursing and have given ourselves over entirely to our Lord and Our Lady in service of Holy Mother Church to proclaim the fullness of truth. And I want to let you know that uh, because of the COVID virus, uh, virus we have not uh, uh, stopped our mission. We're, we're still counseling people over the phone, uh, the radio. It's, uh, it's, it hasn't stopped for us. And I'm hoping... All of you, although you're in the, uh, the public square, you should still be evangelizing. Just because we have some glitches and the way we are worshiping our Lord and un- unable to go to Mass, we can still evangelize and know that Jesus is our hope. And, and you know, St. John Paul II, after he came off, uh, off his uh, balcony there and uh, accepted his pontificate, he said, do not be afraid. Let's not be afraid. Let's go forth and evangelize. And he said it, uh, and it says in, in Scripture 30, 366 times. So you should try not, not be afraid. Go and evangelize at least one time a day. There's one Scripture to cover every day of the year. This is also important what my wife said because right now you can do a lot of personal evangelization with family members, friends. People are looking for hope. And so right now we're called to step up our personal one-on-one evangelization with people and uh, that's that when my wife uh, talked about St. John Paul II, when he went out to the balcony and he said, do not be afraid in his Polish accent. He didn't say he didn't qualify that statement. He said, do not be afraid except for coronavirus. He didn't say that. Do not be afraid, period. OK, I think a lot of this, once again, the 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 devil wants people to key in on their emotions and just be be a. Uh, impelled by fear no we're not impelled by fear we're impelled by faith but let's go on to these uh to this topic about mystics of the church two good articles we're going to lean on and give you some good catechesis solid catechesis on what is the mystic they're written by by glenn delaire and it's a website it's called mystics of the very orthodox uh presentation of what is the mystic and why are we doing this program i get calls people call me up and my wife and they say they call up here the, 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 the home office apostolate, and they say, Jesse, Anita, you must listen to me. I'm a mystic. God is talking to me. Our ladies talk. You must listen to me and share my message to the world. And so I listen 
half-heartedly, but I know they're fake mystics. They're probably good-hearted people that mean well, and they're more impelled by their personal opinions and their emotions than they are by by uh, God speaking to them. So let's take a look at some the article here, and let's get right into it. You know, there's that question. Are, are there authentic mystics, visionaries, or prophets today? Absolutely there are. You know, uh, judging by our history, the answer is yes. Uh, the Catholic Church throughout the century also, in the Old Testament, obviously, we, you know, there are prophets, mystics, and visionaries. But also now in our uh, current day of age, there are uh, uh, visionaries and um, mystics. So here we are. We're, what, what does it mean? What's the definition of a mystic? Okay, it's, it's, it's a personal account, experience of God that truly is extraordinary, uh, not only in intensity and degree, but in kind. So that's, that's what defines a mystic. And what are the mystics? What are their, their missions? They have missions that, they, uh, that, that, that are granted to them through Christ obviously through the church uh they inspire devotion that's one like for example saint mary margaret alacoque who inspired the sacred heart of jesus devotion to the sacred heart of jesus and we have uh some mystics that are uh, victim souls so um that they make reparation uh uh they make reparation for the sins um and what is reparation it is uh repair the damage we also uh their their reparation is for the conversion to God. And what is the conversion? Changing the mind, the heart, the metanoia, the changing of the mind. And and remind us sinners, we're sinners, uh, to make offerings and sacrifices. That's another mission of theirs. They also, uh, another mission is just to expose the darkness. You know, we have a lot of uh, uh, saints, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, St. Faustina. And she had the vision of hell. Um, she and she exposed the darkness. This is what it's like. So you know, heed, heed the heed the warning. Let me. So those are I think five bullets that my wife shared about what is the mystic. Are they four or five bullets? Four, four bullets. Yeah, that was three. Was okay. Four. So this is what the Catholic Church teaches about mystics. There are four bullets. One one of the most important criteria for somebody to be an authentic authentic mystic is obedience to the catholic church okay you this is not the wild wild west god spoke to me so you got to listen to me no no obedience to the catholic church has always been the litmus test that the church uses for discerning the authenticity of a mystic or visionary and their alleged private revelations a true catholic mystic or visionary, is always going to obey the legitimate religious superiors and authorities in the Catholic Church. And we can be sure that if a mystic or seer is in any way disobedient to the local bishop or their religious superiors, then the alleged revelations and messages cannot be authentic. That's called Protestantism. Because how has God set up the economy of grace? God's graces flow through his church in union with the legitimate authority, the Pope, bishops, religious superiors that God himself has established. And the very real danger in following an alleged visionary or mystic is that one can be very, is that one can very easily be led astray by the erroneous teachings and revelations of a false mystic or visionary. In fact, Throughout the centuries, some Catholics have been led out of the church by false visionaries and seers. My wife wants to jump in. For example, uh, in California in the 1990s, there was um, a young woman named Sarah Jaramillo who said she had these mystical experiences and led people to Santa Maria. There was many people that moved out there and um, followed this um, this this visionary and up to this day it hasn't been authentic uh, authent- it's not authentic at, at this point and um so there you go there's a lot of these go out there and um who is the is the 
the one that is behind all that. We know who he is. It's the enemy. You know, again, a lot of these mystics uh, have, have uh, you know, they're, they're, they, they promote and advocate, you know, all these art, art, art rosary and all these devotions that we have. But then they, little by little, they start teaching error along with it. So that's how you can tell when they, it's not, she's not, that person is not an authentic mystic. And the Bible tells us how to uh, authenticate, authenticate mystics and visionaries. Mm-hmm. It's in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. Look what it says here, okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. This is John the Apostle speaking. All the other apostles are dead at this point. So he's talking, when he says us, he's talking about him and the successors of the apostles, because all his brother apostles are dead at this point. He's in the island of Patmos, an old man by himself. And notice what he says here about the authority to judge and the obligation of the faithful to obey the successors of the the apostles and their successors. He says, quote, we belong to God. Who's he talking about? We, him, the only surviving apostle, and all the successors of his brother apostles who have been martyred, all their successors are called bishops, Catholic bishops. So he says, we belong to God. And anyone who knows that knows God listens to us, while anyone who does not belong to God refuses to hear us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. You're listening to Jesus 911, a two-man car. We're talking about all things Catholic, Catholic mystics. And why this is so dangerous, because the devil can deceive you to a false mystic. We'll be back. Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. According to St. John Paul II, being a Christian means saying yes to Jesus Christ. It consists in surrendering to the word of God and relying on it, but also endeavoring to know better and better the profound meaning of this word. May God grant that we always rely on his word, read it often, and put it into practice. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions. But what's important is that a baby is a baby, inside and out of the womb. Not just after birth, but nine months before, at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Jesus 911, we're talking about what is a mystic, what's not a mystic. And I say this because I know a lot of you have friends and family members. They mean well. And they walk around telling you, God spoke to me. You have to listen to me. And they push themselves like if they're an actual mystic and a voice in the Catholic Church. And if you don't listen to them, then uh, they get very upset. 
And they're very adamant about, I'm a mystic, I'm a mystic. So we're going right now through what is a mystic, what's not a mystic, according to Catholic teaching. And again, I think the verse that just unlocked it in the last segment is 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, Anita, what is the us referred to there where John the Apostle is talking about in 1 okay. John 4, 6? The us in Scripture is uh, the us. John is referring to is the, the Peter and his fo- fellow apostles and their successors. That is the Pope and the bishops. Obedience to us is the key that John gives to, quote, knowing the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. The Catholic Church, through the inspiration and the guidance of the Holy Spirit given to the Pope and the bishops alone, has the authority to judge the private revelations of mystics and visionaries. And it is our, our obligation and duty to obey the judgment of the church. Catholics should be aware that the willful disobedience to the church is a sin. Willful disobedience is when one knowingly and intentionally disobeys the legitimate authority and judgment of the church, i.e. maybe the local bishops. Even should the local bishops mistakenly disapprove of a genuine revelation, obedience to the church always remains paramount. It is also a sin to propagate a private revelation disobediently, but it can never be a sin not to propagate one. In other words, like the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. And let's just say, let's just say, for example, if, if it, there is an authentic private revelation, the bishop says, no, no, no. That's between him and God at his judgment, Okay. Your job is to obey the authority that God has set up. If, if, if he's wrong, God will deal with him. For example, it took many decades to authenticate the Fatima apparition. It took decades to authenticate the Divine Mercy apparition. So there were bishops saying, no, 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 we don't see anything here. And then throughout the course of time, the church discovered, no, these are actual mystics and visionaries who have received revelations from heaven. So that's that's above our pay grade for us as Catholics to say, this happened or this didn't happen. It's not you. Ha- you don't have the authority. Neither do I. I'm not a bishop, and I'm not a successor of the of the apostles. And First John four six is clear that only the apostles and their successors have the authority to authenticate what is the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit, which is the spirit of Satan. Now, while we are free to have a personal opinion regarding a private revelation we ultimately must submit to the judgment of the church with practical obedience. And what this means is that while we're free to disagree privately with the bishop's decision, because the bishop is not infallible in these matters, we're obliged to obey with practical obedience. That is, we may not act against the bishop's decree or judgment, and we may not propagate the private revelation or alleged messages that the bishop has judged negatively or continue to say publicly that you regard it as genuine. Because here it is. No private individual Catholic has the authority to judge definitively and officially which private revelations are true and which are not. The authority to rule on the authenticity of a private revelation rests solely with the local bishop. And for some of you guys say, oh, no, but I don't trust the local bishop. Well, let me tell you something. Ultimately, let's not forget what the Bible says. Who guides and protects the church? God, the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit never sleeps. God, the Holy Spirit is not a modernist. God, the Holy Spirit protects and guides the church despite the Peters and Judases amongst us God is in control. But let's talk now about uh, about authentic mystics. I, I just wanted to mention something about um, obedience. We learn to be obedient from, from the time we're born. And we're in constant battle. Since this is a spiritual warfare show, we're in constant uh, battle with the diabolical about obedience, obeying. It starts as a childhood child and as a teenager and even when we get into a relationship, we become, we, we're married, we women need to obedient, and there's an authority structure. 
authority structure starts with, and, and our church teaches that authority structure. So as me, as a wife, as Anita Romero, I need to obey. And even though sometimes I disagree with my husband on, you know, issues, not on spiritual issues, because he's right on on all those, uh, you know, maybe domestic uh, issues. But I know the in finality, his word is what I need to obey. So we have to look at every day we're battling this uh, uh, issue on obedience, all of us. And that's our concupiscence. Talk about authentic mystics. I'll give you a couple. St. Padre Pio of Petrolcini, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. They're all models of obedience. They never pretended to set up Christ against his church through the revelations that they were given. They weren't saying, if you don't believe what I'm saying, then you can't listen to the church. In fact, there are countless occasions in the lives of the saints where our Lord gave them a directive and then the religious superior or spiritual director forbade it. And on, and on every one of these occasions in the lives of the saints, Jesus always instructed them to obey the directives of the religious superior, even when they were against his own directives or wishes. And concerning a mystic or a private revelation, one a Catholic might say, but... But the bishop's a bad bishop, and, and I think the bishop is wrong, and his judgment is incorrect. Stop, okay? Such a sentiment or statement implies that God is not guiding his church or those he has placed in authority over it. So even if the bishop, let's just say, was a modernist, a bad bishop, God still works through him in respect to his office as bishop and shepherd. Sinful or not, faulty or not, God always has power over his creatures, especially the shepherds who represent him and his church. So again, even if the bishop is incorrect, ultimately about his judgment of a mystic or private revelation, one is always correct in obeying his judgment because remember what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 3. It says, Jesus told the crowds and his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. In other words, they have authority. So you must obey them and do everything that they, that they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Close quote. So Jesus Christ tells us about this authority that he's established, and this authority has continued until the second coming of Christ. Comments, Anita? You got any comments? No. Okay. So... We see how Jesus commands us to be obedient to those who are placed as leaders of the church. Again, even if a particular bishop, you deem in your opinion to be a bad bishop. Let me give you just a, 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 an example of the, the authority of a bishop. A priest friend of mine who was doing an exorcism, what they did, the person that they were about to start the session on, uh, uh, the possessed person, they brought in they brought in a picture, the team brought in a picture of the local bishop or the diocese. And they held it in front of the energumen, the possessed. They were, because they were about to do the solemn rite. And guess what? The demon who started manifesting, a manifestation is when the demon appropriates the senses of the possessed. And the, and the, and, and the demon basically starts uh, using his, you know, his senses and his, and his, and his body to start, manifesting his uh his rage when they showed the picture of the bishop to the possessed the demon began screaming in pain there was there was incredible pain that the picture of the local why 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 would a possessed person why would the demon the possessed person start shrieking and screaming in pain at the picture of a catholic bishop because the demon understands the order and the military structure that God has set upon the earth. The Catholic bishops are the generals. And that possessed person looking at the picture of the local ordinary of that diocese knows, wow, this priest right now that's about to unload uh, the rite of exorcism over, over me gets his authority from that apostle. And I'm looking at his picture. They showed the picture to torment the demon. And the demon didn't say, oh, I'm not tormented because he's a modernist. He's a liberal. 
demons understand the office. Remember, it's the office of bishop that has the office of the apostle, despite the sinfulness of the person. You got any comments, Anita? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think we can uh, just look at our separated brothers here on uh, the d- disobedience issue where um, they say, oh, I don't have to go to confession. I go straight. I don't have to confess my, sen- my sins to a man or to a priest. I just go straight to God. Well, he's, he's skipping the authority, the steps of authority there. So uh, is he really confessing to God his sins? Who is he really confessing or to himself? To convince himself what he's doing is, not, is, 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 is okay and that you're forgiven. No, we have, that's why the mystics, all, they, one of their missions is reparation to repair the damage. But that's, and all of them, all mystics are, have the, the charism of humility. They have that, so we have to, all of us, we all struggle with, with the lack thereof humility. So there you go. Um, I, we've got to pray for our separated brothers and sisters to know that there's healing in, in confessing and, and the authority of the church. So, uh, sometimes you'll have these false mystics. They'll say they they obey they disobey the the judgment of the local bishop, and they defend their disobedience. You know what they say? They'll start saying, "Well, I'm going to believe in God rather than men," which is really saying that God has no power over the very bishop that God's commanded us to obey, that God set up through the apostles. And that God, through the Holy Spirit, does not enlighten the bishop or influence him to make the proper judgment. So this person, therefore, think about it. When they say, I'm going to obey God rather than man. I'm going to obey, I'm going to obey, my, own, uh, obey my own visions, not what the bishop says. What they're doing, they're becoming the, their own bishop and judge and authority of that diocese apart from Christ's church. That's called Protestantism. That's exactly what the devil wants. The devil wants to divide and conquer. And so, in other words, such persons would rather believe in the mystic than the church and thereby set up Christ against his church. That's impossible. That's ludicrous. That's fool's gold. You're listening to Jesus 911. We're talking about what is an authentic Catholic mystic, what's a false mystic. If you like this program, like us uh, and subscribe to us and send this to everybody in your social media. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eye to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code, the NPR, to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the Internet. www.CovenantEyes.com Code VMPR Live Porn Free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. 
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we talk about Catholic warfare, Catholic spiritual warfare from a total Catholic perspective. One of the things that the devil does to try to divide the body of Christ is give us false mystics. There are true mystics. There are true visionaries. There's also false mystics and false visionaries. One of the things that demons fear, they fear order. They like disorder. And that's what I want to talk about right now, about the proper order of the Catholic faith and obedience that must be given to God. I want my wife, I want my wife to make some comments. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's heavy. The, the proper order of faith and obedience. There's that word. Okay. From the earliest times, uh, the Catholic Church has always taught that the correct order of one's obedience and the ascent of faith, a faith is to be given to God first, then the church that he founded upon Peter and the apostles. Now, it should immediately be noted that the normal channel in which God works is in and through his church. In addition, the church has always taught that private revelation even church-approved private revelation is not a requirement of faith and belief. For example, faithful Catholics are not ob obligated to believe in the pro popular private revelations of, say, Fatima or Lourdes, etc. Although one could argue that it is a loss for a person not to believe in the more popular church-approved ones. Nevertheless, when the church approves of private revelation, it is simply deeming it worthy of belief. So it, we can, we don't, what this art of uh, this paragraph is saying is that, hey, if you don't believe in it, that's okay. You don't have to follow it. But, but because they are approved by the church and are authentic, what does it hurt? What does it hurt to, it's worthy of belief. It's worthy of, you, of increasing your faith in our blessed mother and which the messages she is, uh, uh, has given to us through the visionaries. I forget which pope it was recently. One of the recent popes said that all the private revelations that are approved are simply a repetition of the four Gospels. That's all they are. Every single private revelation that's approved by the church or the church, church calls worthy of belief, all they are is a repetition of the four Gospels. Now, on the other hand, some followers of certain visionaries and mystics ha have the order of obedience and the ascent of faith as being God and the private revelation of their particular visionary as being on the same level. That's wrong. God's public revelation through scripture and tradition is not on the same level with private revelation. And then a lot of, again, again, some followers of certain visionaries and mystics, then they actually believe that the church founded by Jesus upon Peter and the apostles seems to uh, seems to be supplanted by their private revelation, kind of as something as is not a requirement of faith, and, and so they'll have the private revelation above the authority of the teachings of the church. That's wrong, and some followers of the, some of these visionaries and mystics. They have the revelations of their visionaries, again, as being above the church or at one and the same level as God himself. That's what Satan wants you to believe. Private revelations don't supplant public revelation. Public revelation is what we live and die by. Sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and the magisterium of the church. Let me, let me go back to my police training. When I was a cop in the academy, they teach cops, if you get in a, in a shooting, in a shooting and they also teach the military. 
You fire three shots, stop, assess, three shots, stop, assess, three shots, bam, 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 stop, assess. Military teaches that, law enforcement. Three shots, stop, look, assess, three shots. Three, you know what the three shots that we have? Scripture, tradition, the magisterium. We don't have a one shot, the visionary, what he says, and now forget about everything. Everything goes out the window. No, don't allow. In other words, the point that I'm making here is that the important elements of, of, a, of a false mystic and a visionary, the important elements of their faith and belief is based on the private revelations that they're receiving or of the visionary that they're attached to, which supplant or add significant additional elements to the true doctrines of the Catholic Church. And they believe that, again, they almost believe that their private revelation supplants what Jesus has given to the church through the deposit of faith. Speaking of deposit of faith, I just put a custom license plate on my truck here in Arizona. It's Jude chapter 1, verse 3. And it's because that I want to let everybody know where I drive to look up at that Bible verse. It says, contend for the faith once and for all delivered to the saints. That Jude 1, 3 plaque that I have in Arizona, my plates, that's the Catholic faith. That faith that Jude was talking about in the first century that we're supposed to fight for. That's a, that's a lawyer's word, contend, fight for. Fight for this faith once and for all given to the saints, not once and for all given in the 15th century or the 18th century or the once and for all given in the first century to the apostles. That's the Catholic faith. That's what we have to fight for. Private revelations do not supplant uh, the public revelation, Jude 1, 3. Again, such a practice to believe that private revelations of your favorite mystic or visionary uh, supplants the deposit of faith, this runs contrary to the catechism of the Catholic Church, which teaches the role of private revelations. I think it's like in paragraph 66 to 68, it says this, that private revelations do not improve or complete Christ's definitive revelation. And where's Christ's definitive revelation? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want to talk about now some, some example of some saints. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, add one thing. Is I think, uh, you know, when we all of us have these have mystical private revelations. We all have that. But what are we going to do with that? We're going to it's it's going to it's going to spark uh, uh, something in our soul to change. That's what these visionaries do is they they promote a uh, 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 conversion to God. And that's what our own personal revelation visions are 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 intended to do is for change towards God. Now, um, and and you don't have to go tell everybody, look at I had this and I had that. It's and personal. It's personal. You know, oh, I cheated on my taxes. Well, that's God telling you, you better, you know, there's reparation for that. There's called confession, change your ways. You know, so those things, just, just always remember when you have these visions, these private earliest, those are for you personally. In fact, that's what the catechism says. When you get, when you have a private revelation, God wants to make you holier. That's why he's giving you these messages or he's, uh, he's, he's allowing you to see this. Uh, he's allowing you to feel this. Let me see. I, I think the comrics went off. I hope it didn't. No, no, I'm connected. Okay. So let's talk about the example of some of the saints on one occasion, the Sacred Heart of Jesus made a request to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Here's an authentic mystic. When she told her superior this request, her superior did not approve. And soon afterwards, when our Lord Jesus came to her again, she asked our Lord about this, and our Lord replied to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. He said to her, quote, Not only do I desire that you should do what your superior commands, but also that you should do nothing of all that I request of you without their consent. I love obedience, and without it, no one can please me. This is in the autobiography of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. And elsewhere in her biography, we read that St. Margaret Mary was also told by our Lord Jesus Christ, quote, Listen, my daughter, and do not lightly believe and trust every spirit. For Satan is angry and will try to deceive you. So do nothing without the approval of those who guide you. Being thus under the authority of obedience, 
his efforts against you will be in vain, for he has no power over the obedient. I guess this is why the Bible says over and over, obedience is better than sacrifice. What about the life of St. Padre Pio, Anita? What, what do we know about him? Okay, let's see. Father Pio, he's the most beloved saint. In the life of St. Father uh, Pio of Porcellini, uh, we discovered that this bishop, Archbishop Gallerati, falsely accused Father Pio of various wrongdoings and had unjust sanctions opposed on him. When people would speak against the bishop concerning these unjust sanctions, St. Pio would quickly respond, the will of the bishop is the will of God. Although he was accused and falsely accused at that, he still obeyed the bishop by his statement, the will of the bishop is the will of God. And his conscience of the importance of obedience Father Pio was always showing an example of true religious obedience and respect to his superiors. For him, the superior was the image of Christ, and obeying him was obeying Christ. But it happened that God used Father Pio's superiors as instruments for him to suffer from the church and for the church. And so we see that even if the bishop may be wrong in his judgment, we are always doing God's will by obeying him. Remember, ultimately, we're doing God's will by obeying because we have, we have men in authority and we have to obey them. And it's, a, it's just not a government authority. It's a divinely instituted Divine, authority. Absolutely. And so that, there's a huge there's difference. A difference. And, if, and, if, and again, has there been bad leaders in the, in the church in the past? Yeah, we, Judas is the first one. And the fact is, they're going to be held accountable. You're not going to be held accountable if you're obeying lawful authority. Again, again, as long as you're obeying lawful authority, they're not asking you to sin. Also in the diary of St. Faustina Kowalska, she also says that our Lord Jesus Christ told her the same thing that he told St. Father de Pio. Our Lord says to St. Faustina, quote, Obedience, I have come to do my Father's will. I obeyed my parents. I obeyed my tormentors, and now I obey the priest. Close quote. You're listening to Jesus 9-1. We're talking about uh, mystics, true mystics versus false mystics, and how you can know who a false mystic is. A false mystic doesn't have a, a, a spiritual director. They're saying, God told me, where's your spiritual director? I don't need a spiritual director. God told me. We'll be right back. I don't want to miss what's coming up. Mystics versus false mystics. Hands on Apologetics, you have entered into Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo, where we go wall to wall with defending, explaining, sharing the faith. Master Apologist, Carlo Broussard. Carlo, welcome to Hands on Apologetics. Hey, Gary, it's great to be back in the dojo, my friend. Master Apologist, Ken Hensley, welcome to Hands on Apologetics. Good to see you again, Gary. Good to be with you. Michael Barber, welcome. You have entered into the Virgin Most Powerful's Apologetics Dojo. Gary, thanks for having me on. We are chatting with Master Apologist Carl Keating. Gary, it's great to be back with you. Coming into the dojo is our good friend Steve Ray. Thank you, Gary. Good to be here. Tim Staples, welcome to Hands On Apologetics. Hey, it's great to be with you, Gary. Thanks for having me on. Join many others in Gary Machuda's Apologetics Dojo. We have some of the best Catholic apologists in the nation. Streaming live weekdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific. Hands-on apologetics on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we come to understand. According to St. Augustine, understanding is the reward of faith. Therefore, seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. May God grant us a strong living faith in Him and His divine plan of salvation and help us to believe so that we may understand.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Hey, if God speaks to you audibly or inaudibly, he's calling you to become holy or of our later or saint. That's, it's for you. It's so you can become holier. By the way, if you want to read a good book on authentic mystics, it's called Mystics of the Church by Evelyn Underhill. And you'll see that in that book that in every century, the Catholic Church has always had mystics. But in most recent times, and again, a mystic is somebody that receives extraordinary revelations from God. In recent times, who are some of the big mystics, some of the big hitters? St. Padre Pio, died in 1968. Uh, You have uh, St. Faustina, died in 1938, of the Divine Mercy fame. We have also the uh, extraordinary lay mystic and stigmatist, uh, St. Gemma Golgani. She died in 1903. S- those are some of the the powerhouses in, in recent times. And again, an- another thing very important that I want to just mention is uh, the role of the bishop here. It's how does the church discern a bishop, I mean, a, a, a mystic, okay? The bishop is the one that discerns who's the mystic after judging their entire life posthumously after they die, and then the church sees if there's heroic virtue. That's always the standard for being a saint. Was there heroic virtue demonstrated in their life? And then they see if their messages were consistent with what I have in my license plate, the deposit of faith. But we want to talk about, again, another famous mystic, 20th century Anita and me, we pray this at 3 o'clock every day, sometimes together, sometimes separate. The Chaplet of the Divine Mercy, this was one of the authentic mystics of the 20th century. So here we go. And um, concerning the obedience St. Faustina further wrote, uh, she said, I understood that our efforts, no matter how great, are not pleasing to God if they do not bear the seal of, of obedience. I understand, O Jesus, the spirit of obedience and in what it consists. It includes not only external actions, but also one's reason, will, and judgment. In obeying your superiors, we obey God. So there's the key. The, The six words, five, seven words. In obeying our superiors, we obey God. That comes from the diary of St. Faustina Kowalska. And then he, she continues. And elsewhere in her diary, she also writes, Satan can even clothe himself in a cloak of humility, but he does not know how to wear the cloak of obedience. So there you go. You can have a humble person, but if they are disobedient, bam, that's the key. There you go. That should ignite your fire and whoa. Got to hold that person suspicious. We continue. And again, St. Faustina writes, I will follow your will insofar as you will permit me to do so through your representative. Oh, my Jesus, I give priority to the voice of the church over the voice with which you speak to me. And in reading the text, we see that our Lord confirmed her action and praised her for it. Also, St. Catherine of Siena, she says much the same as St. Faustina. St. Catherine of Siena, doctor of the church, she says this. Oh, how sweet and glorious is this virtue of obedience, which contains all the other virtues, because it is born of charity, and on it the rock of the holy faith is founded. It is a queen, and he who espouses it knows no evil, but only peace and rest. 
By the way, there is a false mystic in Catholic, just to show you one example of a false mystic. Her name was Sister Magdalena de la Cruz. She was a false mystic, and her story should be a very dark warning to all about the grave dangers of being misled by a false visionary or a false mystic. During her youth, Sister Magdalena made a pact with the devil. So this is probably called perfect possession. Eventually, she became a Franciscan nun, and then she moved up the ranks. She became the mother prioress of her convent. She became famous for her mystical graces. They were false mystical graces. She became famous for prophecy, stigmata, visions, but they were all false. And they ended up leading many within the church, along with numerous high dignitaries throughout Spain and abroad. And again, you can read a longer portion of the, of the life of this false mystic. There's an article, it's called Sister Magdalena of the Cross, and uh, it's, written, it's written by uh, Glenn Delaire. So if you want to read, again, more about this false mystic. But again, to repeat what's important, how does God's grace flow into the church and into the family? There is an order. There's structure. When somebody says, no, no, I'm not going to obey the authority, that's a false mystic because God's grace flows through the order of the church and the family. You know, um, just thinking about this, um, the obedience and these um, mystics, uh, that are been authenticated by the church, by the Beal, uh, Sister Faustina, Saint Faustina. It just reminds me of um, the scripture verse that says, uh, 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 "Lay your yoke upon me, and I will give you rest." Where Jesus asks us to our yoke. When we are disobedient, we have a heavy yoke, and all those who know what a yoke is, that's that heavy leather. Um, apparatus around the bulls that are tilling the soil i can't imagine how heavy that is while they have it heavy to they have it there to to keep the bulls from uh keep on their lane and 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 so they can uh direct them so applying the yeah plowing the field and um so that's what i think about disobedience as a huge yoke but then that scripture comes to my mind and says you know, take your yoke upon me and I will give you rest. Just imagine taking that yoke off of this uh, bull and setting aside, you know, how rested he is, how relieved. That's what obedience is. That's how we can uh, uh, vision it. So for those that are having difficulties with disobedience, think about that. Because I know when I'm a little bit, you know, disobedient, I, I, I think, gosh, and then I, I, I get back in my lane and, and I, you know, ask for for um, repentance. And I know then, oh, I, you're just so relieved. Right on. Listening to Jesus 911, two-man car. This is a husband and wife team, spiritual warfare. And uh, God has called us to evangelize and to provide spiritual direction for people uh, that are spiritually afflicted. We're part of the Liber Cristo team, by the way. Both of us were part of the lay advisory board to Liber Cristo under Father Ripperger. We're under Father Ripperger's direct uh, spiritual direction. And so we're just trying to put out information that's in line with authentic Catholic teaching that's been taught for 2,000 years, the more monastic to mystic model of healing liberation. Uh, my wife made four points. I think I want to end the show with making these four points because this is very, very important that Mystics and visionaries, especially chosen souls, have four missions within the church. The first one is they inspire devotions, such as the Sacred Heart or the Divine Mercy devotions. They inspire devotions. Number two, through their lives as victim souls, they make reparation to God, repair the damage, for the conversion of sinners, and remind us to make sacrifices and to do penance. Third characteristic of a, of a mystic. They enlighten us concerning the evils of the world and reveal to us the horrors of sin. Fourth characteristic of a mystic or visionary, that through their sufferings, 
willingly accepted and offered to God, they remind us to our call to participate in the redemption of all of humanity through the offering of our own sacrifices and through our sufferings willingly accepted. Again, if you want to read more in detail about all this, there's the book that's been written on this topic. It's called Mystics of the Church by Evelyn Underhill, where she talks about the authentic mystics in the Catholic Church. And uh, if, if again, if you're receiving revelations from God, accept them. Say, hey, uh, Lord, if this is from you, I accept it. But everything has to be gauged or the, the grid that you have to discern whether it's from God or not. Does it comport with sacred scripture and sacred tradition? That's the interpretive grid for any apparition or any revelation. Even I think it was Pope Paul VI said that all the Marian apparitions are nothing but a repetition of the four Gospels. Anita, uh, have you got a comment? Yeah, I do have a comment on the the last uh, mission through their sufferings, willingly accepted and offered to God and to remind us of our call to participate in redemption, redemption of all of humanity through offering of our own sacrifice and through our sufferings, uh, willingly accepted. So when we are suffering, that could mean we are ill. When we have a son that's strayed away, that's a form of stuff, suffering. When, you know, uh, just all these... It, for example, we're all, there's a lockdown and people can't, just can only go to the grocery. They can't go to the restaurants and we can't be freely li- like we were. That's a form of suffering. Just offer it up. Offer it up. Although, uh, a- absolutely, we need to pray for, uh, for, uh, to come back for our, for the restoration. every to restoration of our, of our society. But that is a form of suffering. Just think about that. So offer it up. Let's end with a soul of Christ prayer together. We want to end the shows with the soul of Christ. It's called Anima Christi in Latin. And we'll pray it in the language of Holy Mother Church. You know, many patris said, Feliz Spiritus Santi, Amen. Anima Christi, santifica me. Corpus Christi, salve me. Sanguis Christi, enebria me. Aqua lateris Christi, lave me. Facio Christi, conforta me. O boni e su exaudi me. Intra tu al bonera absconde me. Ne permites me separaria te, a vos te maligno defende me, in ora mortis me avoca me, et ubi me vidi ad ucum tantis tuis laudem te, in secula seculorum, amen. In nomini Patris et Filii, Spiritus Santi, amen. Those two prayers, spiritual warfare prayers, start off the day, St. Michael the Archangel prayer, we start off, you don't have to do it in Latin, you can do it in English or Spanish, <laughs> or any language that you speak. And then end your day, also add your day, the soul of Christ prayer, it's called the Anima Christi, it's also a deliverance prayer. So we start our show off with two, del- two deliverance prayers. St. Michael the Archangel, short form, soul of Christ. Uh, and uh, hey, thanks for listening to Jesus 911. I hope you like what you heard today. If you, li- if you like what you heard, then like us. And uh, send the show to other people on your social media. And uh, let other people know about Virgin Most Powerful. Any final comments? Have a less holy. Up next. Gary Machuda, hands-on apologetics, uh, the black belt of Catholic apologetics in the Midwest Command Center, the Catholic Dojo. Hands-on apologetics. The St. Father of says, pray, hope, and don't worry. God always listens to your prayers. Drop, St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, Grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.